So, um, I don't know if you can hear my voice or whatever, if that matters. Um, let's uh, just talk about anything else you think is worth checking out. I think on the list I've got to do checking out external drive pedals into it and also checking this out in front of an amp, potentially with like a capture versus a drive or whatever, to see how it reacts in front of an amp. Um, Let's just see if there's like a pad input for humbuckers. There we are. So it's in. USB levels in one. If we touch that, we've got impedance settings, uh, type instrument or mic and in one level. So I guess we could take that down a touch. So like a, a normal pad, I think, is about 5 dB. So in theory, this should work. Hey Steve, um, you guys know I'm a big fan of the Helix, so it just feels also good, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And I was thinking about how long it might take to do the kind of videos that I'm doing with the quad cortex, you know, obviously going through all of the amps on the Helix would take a long time going through all the effects would take even longer um, but yeah you know, it's just you know I'm not going to stop playing other modelers just because I've got a, a core cortex um, in terms of feel there's no modeler feels one way if that makes sense yeah there is a line level uh, let's just Heal it, type, oh wait, instrument or mic. I take it that's not what you are looking for. What would line level be? Anyway, so, um, yeah, the feel, you know, no modeler is feels like one thing, if that makes sense. So if I play an AC30 on here and on a Helix and on an FM3, they're all going to feel way more similar than if I was to play an AC30 on here and then like, I don't know, a 5150. Does that make any sense? So it's a bit of a impossible question for me to answer. Um, for me, feel is directly linked to whatever the tone is that I'm playing. Um, so that's about all I can... eight milliseconds uh, what you're talking about latency I presume um, I don't think they have fixed latency so I think the the round trip uh, of conversions is 1.8 milliseconds for both the helix and the quad cortex and then if you add a loop into that I think that doubles that 
Um, so if you add an effects loop, you effectively add another conversion. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, the thing is all modelers feel way more similar again to each other than they do to an actual tube amp in my experience. I just think the experience itself is so different. Um, whereas the experience of playing through a, a modeler compared to another modeler is more similar to me than, you know, playing through a modeler and a tube amp, if that makes any sense. Um, but I think that's partly to do with, you know, big speakers and cabinets and all that sort of stuff, more so than relative quality or anything. And for me personally, sometimes, you know, that might just be, um, sometimes that might just be, I, I prefer the way a modeler feels anyway to something like a, a Vox AC30 um, with no reverb. Uh, personally, I'd rather be playing a modeler than that, for example. Um, here's a pitch shift. Um, uh, let's just chuck it. I don't know. Hold on down an octave. You will feel some latency. Um, I did it this morning where I was sort of playing, if you're playing fast the lead lines you'll definitely notice it. Um, but it's nothing really bad, uh, it's just... the video yet and then you are enjoying these sort of things I guess that helps other people find the stream if they need to and it will, might help other people ask the questions that may lead to me doing more interesting videos with it if you've got things that you want so leave comments and stuff and let's just open up this chat a little bit so discovered this morning that the poly uh, the pitch I think seems to be a mono block um, I think that's the case anyway I, I can't really confirm it but basically anything you put into it I think gets summed out as mono I could be totally wrong about that but I think that's the case um, <laughs> to use than a helix because to me the interface is not substantially different to a helix if that makes sense it's just you're using a touch screen aside from that the interface is um, quite similar to a helix if that is fair I think <laughs> my three words will be not a disappointment so I don't know you personally I'm generally fairly skeptical of things that are marketed in this way or quite hyped or pushed um, and I think you know probably there's a, a selection of viewers that are also feeling in that kind of same way it's like um, however you know 
when people marketing market a thing in a certain way um i think some of us feel a certain way about it um but i'd say it's not disappointing uh it, it meets those expectations i think um so clarity fidelity fidelity i don't know that's again a really hard thing to quantify i think two chords for each thing so like the helix has one core for a signal path i think the quad cortex is still two for the top path and two for the bottom path i don't think it's um i don't think they're fully independent in terms of processing because you end up with a limitation on both lines rather than on one and not the other if that makes sense um yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, like, it depends on what your expectations of this thing were. If you're a seasoned kind of person who has a lot of experience of modelers, I think you might have a fair idea of what to expect. But, like, I, I was doing the stream through it earlier, kind of going through all of the amp models, and some people were kind of saying, you know, it sounds a bit fizzy uh, on the PV5150s, but I think most of us... Uh, I think most of us that have tried out a PV5150 in real life and other models of a 5150, no matter what the device, I think you'll be used to that kind of sound and what that comes across like. And, you know, that might be a sound that you dig or it might be a sound that you don't. But, uh, yeah. I don't... You, if you can find it somewhere... So, for instance, so like on this path here, I've got a delay and a reverb. If it was separate, I'd imagine I'd be able to put more delays on this channel here. As it is, because I've got a delay in the signal here, I can't put another one uh, underneath. Um, so I think the limitation is two cores to one signal uh, path or split or whatever. If that makes sense. I, I, again, I could be wrong, but it seems that way to me because it wouldn't make sense that I could have yeah they don't seem to be independent is what I'm saying so this line here and this line here I can't whatever do you get what I mean <laughs> Yeah, the IR can show a high fizz, or we could use a thing like a high cut uh, or a different mic option. But fizz is definitely a thing, you know, presence, and Eric Johnson calls it trash. That is 100% a thing that you will experience with a real amp, especially if you're using a lot of gain, um, which things like a diesel or.
way to monitor input and output levels? That's a good question. Maybe um, CPU monitor. Great question. I don't know. a really good question someone might know the answer to that and they might hopefully chime in and just say what if i hold in so like on the helix now you can monitor in and out or on the, the fractal audio stuff there's like a mode where you can put it so that you see the in and out of every block. I don't know if that's the case with this. Um, I've not found it yet. The input output screen, is that that one? The one where you go down? Come on. Dave so that's a future thing I believe um, I don't think it's the case at the moment that you can um, use the plugins or well, I know it's not the case at the moment so input one you could monitor the level there and you can also set the impedance I don't know if that's editable by um, preset or not. Maybe it is, not sure. It might be a global setting. Could I, uh, let's try and make the output limiter kick in. So what shall we do if we bring it back to, so the limiter just, just works, does it? set the level with the limiter. So the limiter is just at north. for my thingy anyway, so if I just put that up to 12. There's the limiter kicking in if that makes sense. useful or not really. I guess there must be a reason that they've done it. Um, so, digital sound. So, what do you mean exactly? So isn't, 
the sound that you're talking about, I guess, is sort of like high end stuff. So here's. <laughs> So maybe if we just start a new preset, um, and what do you want, like a something high gain? Um, um, amp. So let's just try something high gain-ish. And so the raw channel of a trim reverb, and then cab-wise, let's I think there were some questions about cabs as well, so let's use a 4x12 rectifier, I guess. Um, or traditional V30 92. Um, so, kind of digitalness. So, we're just let me know what you're thinking. That's quite a dark tone. To me, so what I think people mean when they say digital would be like fizzy stuff. Um, which in this particular case is not making any kind of fizzy sounds right now. But if I was to do this, can imagine that would be the sort of thing that we're talking about. So the way that I would tame this basically in any device would be to use an EQ, um, like a high cut, or you know I might move these away so that there's less ooh, cancel less kind of presence in the tone. Squirrels in the background. I've heard people talk about squirrels before. I don't know if that's... Yeah, I, I feel like normal amps do that, that sort of thing, but who knows. I can imagine that if it's a thing that you hear, it's going <laughs> to be quite irritating. But I feel like most modelers do something like that, don't they? Um, uh, I don't think you can add reflections in the... If I just bypass that a sec. So, I doesn't seem to be adding like room noise or distance, or does it? No, don't think it does. So you'd have to do that elsewhere. But yeah, like you could add in a room in that way, maybe that. But the more you crank up gain on these things, the the te well, if we were to use it without an amp on here, you'd have a very different kind of tone. So that's what I think most people. Want. That's like the extreme version of what I think people mean when they say digital, and then that kind of thing. I feel like is less digital, if that makes sense. Um, what I might do is just copy all of this, put that out through output 3, and bring this one out 4, and if we change this to a different device, um, which we try drive channel the Lone Star, done. Is that going to work? And then in. Um, so that. But again, this kind of 
fizz aspect is just something that happens with everything I think but that to me is a pretty warm sound um. sound to me like a, a fizzy tone at all. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Um, let's chuck this bad boy in. people that say they've heard aliasing and stuff like that in the quad cortex um, but I don't think this is the kind of tone where you would actually hear that so maybe I'll just call this classic LP I don't know. if you watch like Ola England's videos on all sorts of different stuff, you know, tube amps and stuff. To me, that stuff sounds very fizzy as well. I think it's just... Um, if you're particularly averse to fuzz or fizz or whatever, then things like this might... Oh, that's not what I wanted. That is not what I wanted. I want a high, high low cut. So this kind of thing would be what I might do if I'm using lots of gain, so this low pass frequency thing, that kind of thing. But again, on a tone that's like this and already dark. Can I make a mid gain tone? Uh, yeah, what do you define as mid gain? That's like a fairly mid game tone, eh? seems to mean very different things for different people so let me just save this and then you tell me exactly what you want me to build and I'll try and do it so create new go for it measure AC 30 all right let's um, I mean an AC 30 is generally a hugely present amp anyway right so um, and cab wise let's just choose uh, some sort of AC30 cab I guess let's get some sort of 2x12 here surely 2x12 um, 65 yeah I think I've heard hugely fizzy real amps <laughs> Squirrels thing, are you talking about the sort of the hair? Because that does seem to me to be something that happens with a real amp. It's 
not in the background, it's at the top end of the spectrum. Um, th those are things that I think happen with real amps. I, you know, could be totally wrong, but it's not something that jumps out to me as being got a chance. I don't have a bass that's here. Yeah, I mean that chime is high end and presence, right? So let me just EQ the specific thing you're talking about and try and point it out. So if you um, got this EQ here, presumably you're talking about something around uh, where are you here? Frequency probably around six kilohertz, I guess. That would be where I would kind of think it is. Uh, I just EQ out one. Three, that's not four. It's not the game time. Then one. How do I set the Q? You mean in this thing here? I mean, I've heard amps, particularly in A30, they, if you get your head right next to them, they certainly don't sound pleasant most of the time. Is that, is that kind of the stuff that you're talking about? In any case, it doesn't have to be for everyone. I don't think he's talking about the architect, uh, ar that kind of ar uh, artifact, Ralph. I think it's um, something else. Yeah, exactly. I think, and also you could move your your mic, what you call it, distance and stuff, and that's gonna have an impact on the high end as well. And you could change mics. Um, be whatever. something I hear with every single modeler and there's the potential of it I think for with every single amp uh, to me it's more pronounced with some amps when you play more than one note together find is if they got rid of that uh, you'd probably end up with very flat sounding amps or you'd end up with a high cut all the way down I don't know so maybe you'd end up with something that sounded like this so there's plenty of argument that you can do this if you want to but if you bring down a, a high cut I'm 
not trying to convince you to buy one anyway, it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> um, Another condenser. Uh, wait, I've already done that one. 184. <laughs> Chuck it between the amp and the cab. Chuck it before the <laughs> amp if you really want. Um, but I think if you do that too much, you get the sense. People will probably tell you it sounds like you've got a blanket over the, the speaker. Um, but yeah, I'm, I don't. I don't know that it's a problem so much as it's sort of accuracy yeah that, that I do like that cab thing um, I think that's one of the within the cab block is cool as well. But anyway, let's get back to... So any other sort of questions about bits and pieces? Um, things that I need to... Like that to me sounds super dark now, so I've just bypassed those EQs that were there to demonstrate that as an idea. Yeah, the the um the mic movement is only for factory cabs. You can't do that for a captured cab. Uh, I guess you wouldn't be able to do that for IRs either. Finding things fizzy and then unpleasant. Ooh. Why's that not working? That's because it's. It does not have all the effects that the HX has. take too long to run through all of the effects so I can just do it for you here so we've got uh, overdrive you've got 16 drives at the moment so there you are in terms of that there's only one fuzz at the moment um, the usual other culprits are there um, delay wise you've got four delays so you've got a digital delay a ping pong delay a simple delay and a tape delay um, Reverb wise you've got ambience which is like shorter than a room, cave which is longer, hall which is longer as well, and modulated which is more like a Strymon style, room which is like a room and then spring. Uh, I think most of us didn't particularly dig the spring hugely but it's good enough probably. Then compressors we've got a few different ones and most of those seem like they're based kind of in a, a studio compressor style, dual legendary 87 optocomp solid state and VCA. Then pitch wise you've got a pitch shifter, poly octava and a whammy pedal. Um, then modulation wise you've got a chorus, vibrato, tremolo, rotary, phaser, uh, univibe, flanger and chorus. Um, a couple of filters, all of those are like envelope filter style. 
uh, EQ and three wah pedals. So um, fairly, you know, light on the effects compared to some of the competitors. Um, have I tried pedals into it? No, that's something I'm going to try tomorrow, I think. Um, can you make a note feedback with a, a modeler? Hmm. Uh, it's a good question. I don't know. Um, yeah, an IR makes a massive difference on everything. Um, how does it feel compared to Iridium? Uh, not really sure. Uh, can you make a note feedback with a modeler? It depends on what you're monitoring it through. With headphones like this, it'll be difficult. Is it easy or quick to download presets? It's pretty quick. Yeah, you just go on the app and um, I can't show you properly, but you go on it and then you start it and then you go uh, to settings and go down here and starred and shared with me. You basically just go into them. These are the ones that I've starred. So Tom Quayle's bits and pieces and then you just download them and it, you put them into a slot. So that's relatively straightforward. Um, it does have the basic food groups, I think, yeah. With a cams capsim, you can never get feedback. Uh, I think you can. Um, sometimes you get feedback in a way that you don't want. Um, sometimes the feedback that you actually end up getting is a little bit of that harsher stuff rather than the more musical stuff. Um, planning on doing a comparison with other mod modelers. Um, I can try and do that. The thing is, it's going to be largely sort of um i can i can try it we'll see what happens um yeah i think they're, they're working on more effects but then the same is also true of everyone else so it's line six are bringing out new effects all the time um, I would say is I'm not sure whether it's necessarily smart to buy uh, an item based on what the future might look like I don't know if that's um, because then wouldn't you say well I don't know is that a, a smart way to buy a thing I don't know that's for you to decide I guess but um, I would make the decision based on whether what's in there right now can do the job for you first and then when the updates come, if they do, uh, we don't know what the kind of pace of those updates might be. Um, and I think if you buy it based on what's there now, you avoid that kind of disappointment. Um, and yes, in theory, it should get better from here. But then so is every other modeler, if that makes sense.
personally, I don't have an issue with most of the effects that are already there. I know in some of the reviews they said whatever. Um, so that's cool. Um, you know, if you've if you've seen the videos of it, you've probably heard what it can do. If there's things that you're seeing that it can't do, then that's, you know, a fair... <laughs> thing is I think yeah just just it's probably if, if you want to be safest with it it's probably best to buy knowing what's already in there and then seeing what comes in the future as potentially a bonus because it's not really guaranteed any of this stuff right um, I think people in the head rush world for instance um, at one stage or another it might have looked like they were getting regular updates or the Hotel Ampero or whatever um, but I don't think it's guaranteed that all companies will do what for instance Line 6 or Fractal do um, <laughs> like showing the gap I guess. Cheers Gabriel, have a good evening. Um, so like this, well that's not work. Um, if I just go between sort of, uh, if we go into preset mode, like that's the most pronounced kind of gap because I'm going from change scenes within a preset okay um, yeah something for the future I guess uh, let's just go to that one Um, I'm not sure if you can change the colours of the LEDs. I'm not sure. Um, 
I think they might be sort of deliberately one way or another. Uh, I think they might be fixed to whatever style they are, sort of like the Helix. Um, <laughs> They seem to all be blue in C mode, but again, I don't know for sure about that. That might be something else that can be changed. The way that this kind of works is that you can set bypass states per scene um, and it remembers that but you can also change parameters per scene um, like snapshots on the, the helix or similar to scenes within the fractal stuff anyway so that's some bits and pieces that i wanted to kind of wanted to just get the idea of whether there were bits and pieces that people wanted to know about. So again, if, if you've got thoughts. Maybe for you, the, the one thing that is missing that I would need for it to be something that I could use uh, more regularly would be a looper. Um, that's something I'd like. Something else that I'd like, I guess, would be some kind of Dumbly style models. Uh, that'd be cool. Um, maybe a Princeton style model. Bits and pieces like that. Um, some of the shimmery reverbs and those bits and pieces, uh, I think, would be a nice addition. Um, I don't know if there's, there's not too much. Uh, what else is there that's missing that someone mentioned? Um, some modulation stuff, probably. Um, fuzz pedals again you've got only one fuzz pedal in there at the moment i'm not sure that it captures fuzzes super well i don't know there's demos of that and i think that's one of the things that they said at the moment it doesn't do an amazing job of capturing fuzzes um you know but you can capture other drive pedals pretty well and you can capture um things like a kemper does pretty well as well um so I think that's fairly good. I like the idea that you could sort of collapse a signal chain down into a capture. So that's useful in terms of preserving DSP. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's pretty good. Um, does the case get hot? Um, so at the moment, it's not very hot. Uh, Throughout the day, it's been a little bit warmer than it is right now, uh, but it's quite well ventilated. Well, it's got big vents in the side, is what I mean by that. Um, so I'm not noticing getting too hot. Uh, right, let's go back and set that to that input level. So are these in-out settings, are these global? The switches so the switches uh they vary in wobbliness interestingly enough so i don't know maybe i'll, I'll just zoom in or we'll focus on here so this one over here has a fair bit of wiggle in it this one here has a bit less this one here has less this one here has a bit less so they vary um I don't know what the acceptable amount of wiggle is. I think they've tested them fairly extensively. That one over there has got a bit of wiggle as well. Uh, um, but I think it's a valid thing to be wondering about, you know, how are these going to last over time? 
uh, you already had a Kemper, would you buy a QC based solely on the tone of the amps? Um, me personally, um, I don't know, it, it doesn't have a looper. I think that the thing that would make me buy this over a Kemper would be the dual amps capability or quad amps. That would be the thing for me that would be the reason that I might consider this over a Kemper. Now that's not to say that there might not be a future Kemper, but at the moment the Kemper is, you know, relatively been out a while and I think we have moved a little bit past the idea of having a fixed signal chain and this seems to be more the way that companies are going now in terms of, you know, like a Line 6 Helix, you can move everything around the signal chain, Fractal, you can move everything around the grid. Um, the Kemper is still just basically a single line and then there's the potential of a parallel path but um, so I think that's one key difference um, but yeah that it's a good question um, in terms of gig ready sound I guess or, or record ready sounds depending on whether you use paid for profiles i don't know what you would personally do with a, your your kemper um i feel like there's actually a load of really usable stuff within it without having to buy any um you know i think yeah i don't know is the kemper more ready for stage and all that sort of stuff uh, i think it's certainly more proven um if i could only keep one modeler which one would it be the helix um, I think, Elliot, in answer to your question, if I could keep one modeler. At the moment, the Quad Cortex doesn't do some of the things that I would need it to do in order to be the, the one or whatever. Um, luckily, I don't need to pick just one, so that's kind of cool. But if I did, and you know, some people probably do have to pick, um, that would be the one for me, I think, Helix. It's the one I use most anyway, I guess that answers it. G system has very similar rotary buttons and been using it flawlessly for 10 years with no problem. So yeah, I think even normal switches fail, right? So, I mean, is there any 10 year old piece of gear, um, you know, any piece of gear would fail especially when you've got large numbers of units out um, I think these types of knobs are not not different particularly they're just unusual that we've not seen too many of them I guess but the other types of knobs also fail from time to time don't they I think it's 1.0 yeah that's what people are dealing with though you're not buying the item for future, are you? You're buying it for right now. That's why it makes sense to talk about what it is right now, not what it might be in the future. good saying about future updates and stuff but the reality is that some people have got to literally go and gig it I don't know whenever gigs come back um, you're going to be making a choice based on what's in the unit literally right now not future updates <laughs>
I think the first time that one of these breaks, you're probably going to hear quite a lot about it and people will potentially be a bit hysterical about it. But I think with any modeler, there's going to be failures, especially if they hit the market at a, a high rate. So um, it'll be interesting to see how these things end up shaking out, um, I think. <laughs> can't actually upload presets from the plugins yet that's a future thing so again this is kind of the reason that I think it's worth considering what's possible in the unit now because there's a lot of future things that are in the pipeline but it's not clear what the priority will be and it's not clear what the timeline is for that so if you're someone who's saying well I've got this thing because I know at some point it's going to be able to use the plugins the the next question I guess is when or well, i got this thing because in the future they've said it'll be able to do looping okay when so you know for a working musician or whatever um i think you literally your only choice is to buy based on what's literally in the unit now and that's kind of the benchmark for comparing with other modelers um has to be surely Anyway, right, so tomorrow I'll try some drives into it. They did say at release it was possible, but I think things have changed a bit. Um, I think they've pared back some of their expectations. Um, yeah, I think, okay, yeah, that's a good point as well from Vice Satrucci. They should, in theory, be engineered in a way... Um, engineered in a way that they can be repaired I'd imagine uh, I think a sensible company would be doing that so I'm relatively confident they wouldn't have selected these components if they were expecting that loads of them would come back and need um, replacing that wouldn't make business sense uh, so some level of trust in that probably makes sense <laughs> I guess um, anyway, I'll say that and one breaks. But yeah, I, hardware wise, it feels pretty good. The one thing that feels less, um, I don't know, quality or whatever, be that, that power supply that I think uh, certainly some people will probably think certain things about. Um, but again, power supplies are power supplies um, I think the ultimate kind of option um, would be like a, a kettle lead right that to me seems like the most gig suitable thing yeah I've checked out the app um, I've got some Tom Quail ones on here that was what this preset was based on um, so yeah anyway tomorrow I'll try some real drives with it We'll see how we get on. I may try it in front of an amp, see how we get on with that. Um, but, yeah, those are some thoughts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ross's heart broke. <laughs> that's not funny, is it? Um, I think that's also a good thing. Not to be a total fanboy of Line 6, but I think they have a pretty good track record of dealing with things that break. Um... This is the word on the street anyway. I think that's that's kind of the mark of a company that's supporting their project. Project? Product. Um, you know, things do kind of break when they're built at scale. I think it's more about how you support that thing if breakages do happen. Um, so, you know, the jury has to be out on that. Um, yeah. part of manufacturing I guess isn't it I don't know the first thing about manufacturing obviously anyway yeah so that's that um, what else do I need to check out with it 
compared it to the newer DSP plugins, how does it sound? Um, well, it sounds like those, to be honest. Um, if you dig the way those sounds, I think this would work for you. The, the familiar, um, the amps sort of respond in that similar sort of way. And I think because it's using largely Nolly's cabs, they're voiced in that kind of way, I think. But yeah, check it out if you if you like the plugins. I'm imagining you're going to dig what they do with this. It's the same people writing the same kind of algorithms, as far as I know. So follows that it should sound pretty much the same. Um, yeah, the amps that I found today that I kind of really dug were the Lone Star and the JTM. So I'm going to probably explore those a bit more tomorrow as well, or something like that. Um, but yeah, if you got ideas for bits and pieces that you think no one else has done that and that's something that I think I would want to know as a person then feel free to leave them on a video comments and stuff that's kind of I'm just trying to fill in the gaps about what people maybe haven't checked out on it um, yeah so you know things like how to all of the amp sound, how do all the effects sound, what's actually in there. Um, that's what I'm sort of trying to address mm -hmm. for people that might be interested. Anyway, I'm going to go and watch Lost. Catch you in a bit.